Great. Okay, so um, yeah, my name is Gianfranco Papa, and I am CTO and co-founder at Somnia Software. Uh, we specialize in app development using Flutter. Um, basically, we started more than three years ago, and we started um, coding uh, like mobile apps. But nowadays, we are also uh, making web apps, so that's awesome. We feel that it's really natural in our development process, and hopefully, in the future, we are also incorporating desktop apps. Uh, so yeah, uh, today I'm going to talk about uh, how to use Mason to speed up your development process uh, in Flutter, okay? Great. So the agenda for today, basically I'm going to uh, talk about what is Mason and what is the Mason CLI. Uh, also, I'm going to present uh, a tool that is called BrickUp, a platform. Uh, and then we are going to have a brief demo of the tools that I explained. Uh, and finally, we will have like uh, some minor conclusions on all the all the topics. And then of course, uh, a session of Q&A. Great, so let's start then. So, okay, so I, I know that uh, we are almost uh, done with all the presentation, but I think like this will be very exciting. So stay tuned for this part. Okay, so I'm going to uh, start explaining what is Mason, right? In case you don't know it. It's a library that was created by Felix Angel, well known by the community, I think. And uh, also a big shout out for him that he's on the chat. Uh, and, and yeah, uh, he created this awesome library that we use in, in our daily basis in our company. And certainly it, it is really uh, a tool that has speed up our development process. So yeah, uh, what is Mason, right? Mason is just like a Dart template generator. Okay, so to understand what the problem, what, what is Mason, we have to identify what was the problem that Mason is trying to solve. So when we develop uh, anything, uh, basically there are some times where we have to uh, code a lot of boilerplate code. That will be the, the code that we need to have it in order to create some, some of the features that we are going to create. So in that cases, when we feel like we are doing like uh, a lot of repetitive code, or just uh, a manual type that, that is really repetitive is where Mason can help us to automate this kind of process. So basically by creating different templates, we will be able to spin up like this boilerplate code really quickly. And that's why one of the, the things that it solves is to having uh, at the same time, the same level of consistency because naturally there are a lot of details that we might take care of in the creation of these different things that we are going to see about it. And also it let us be more productive because we are not going to spend so much time on uh, actually coding these details. And yeah, uh, maybe uh, you're spending like, I don't know, 20 minutes to set up all your boiler protocol for doing something. Uh, so yeah, Mason can save you that time and you will feel more productive. So yeah, ultimately you will have like a better uh, developer ex experience. So if, if you haven't tried, I, I strongly suggest to do it because I, and you can evaluate it by yourself. All right, so another thing that I, I'm going to talk about is the Mason CLI. It uh, basically allows, it, it is a CLI that allows developers to create and consume reusable bricks. So bricks are, uh, we're going to see about it, but are this, templates, they're called bricks. And the thing about them is that they use the Mostas template system. So it's something we have to learn about, but basically we will be able to create files and use this notation so we can have dynamic variables or uh, yeah, to inject to that template. So we can reuse it across many projects. And what would be the state of the art uh, in Flutter uh, in, in this kind of tools? So basically there are uh, many tools out there in different technologies. The thing that I think that Mason does differently is the fact that uh, it lets you create your own template. And you don't have to rely on templates that are, were defined by other one, but you can uh, basically create your own. And, and, and yeah, and, and why we're talking this about in Flutter, of course, because this tool was written in Dart. So naturally like Flutter developers will adopt this uh, first, but it's really a, an agnostic tool that can be used in any in any kind of program language or any kind of task. So yeah, there are some certain things that works uh, better on 
on Flutter, because as the tool was written in Dart, there, there are things like running regeneration scripts or post-generation scripts that are only available using the Dart programming language. So, but yeah, apart from that, uh, you can really create anything, uh, no matter like the language you're using. All right, so what would be the most common use cases for this uh, tool? So here I put some of them, but uh, it, it is uh, something that as developers should uh, identify and see where uh, we are doing like repetitive things to kind of think, okay, this is a good place to put uh, a, a template. And just to explain a few of them, maybe you are uh, uh, creating your, your widget uh, again and again. I, I, I think like everyone should be familiar with the VS Code extension to create a stateless widget or a stateful widget, but maybe you're relying on a different, I know, uh, state, state management solution, maybe block or provider or Riverpod. So uh, you have to spin up like your own widget really fast and Mason can help you do uh, that really fast and consistent. Also, when you create a new feature, maybe again, you're relying on your state management solution. You have to create a view or even a route or Barrett files. All of that can uh, be automated. Uh, and yeah, apart from that, there are simpler things. You can have like um, more structured folders like packages or plugins or even a whole app, right? And uh, let's say you are using your own kind of like way to create in your own apps. And because as we know, Flutter is not so opinionated and this is good and bad because uh, it lets you, it is very flexible, but at the same time, uh, when you use the Flutter create command, it is like really bare bones. So you, uh, if you're using your own practices, you have to copy and paste in each project. So using Mason can actually uh, facilitate that process. So you don't have to spend so much time in the initial setup and you can just like care about uh, the most interesting part of your application. And again, I put, uh, for example, I know it could be just a readme file. It, it doesn't have to be something Flutter specific. So yeah, we, we're going to see about uh, in, in the demo. But basically, uh, before starting with the demo, uh, I wanted to also present the Rehab uh, platform that basically, um, if I can define this platform will be to and basically having the pub dev for the bricks because it allows you to discover, publish, and install reusable templates. So even though it is in a closed alpha and it's in the very beginning, I, have, I think it has a lot of potential because uh, yeah, you will be able to find bricks from the community to share your own, to know how other uh, people in the community um, are applying best practices. And uh, yeah, uh, if we don't rely on BrickHub, we can always uh, share our code uh, using GitHub. That is a way that we, if, if you don't have a BrickHub account, you can do it. But yeah, this enhances the experience of managing your bricks. So yeah, I strongly suggest also to try to uh, test it in, in this closed alpha and try to yeah uh, publish your own bricks. Okay, so now, yeah, I think we are in condition uh, to start with the demo. So I'm going to share my screen. All right, so, okay. So before starting with the coding part, uh, let me know if you are seeing my screen, yeah. Okay, so I wanted to show first, um, I think, yeah, you're seeing my screen now, right? Okay. So I wanted to show uh, the Mason uh, CLI because I, I'm not going to cover really um, the, okay, remove from screen here. I think I have to add to share my screen. Okay, just a second. All right, now I'm seeing my screen. Okay, so basically, uh, I wanted to show first the Mason CLI uh, documentation because as it's, it's a really uh, extensive uh, documentation, I'm not going to cover uh, every point. So basically, uh, in this documentation, you are, you, I highly suggest to explore it and you will find how to, create, how to uh, download uh, the Mason CLI, uh, what are the basic commands that you can uh, explore it. 
And yeah, uh, apart from that, uh, it also explains the master template system in here. So you will be able to find uh, the building lambdas for your particular use case. Let's say we are creating a template in Dart, so we will be using um, the camel case notations for classes or for files we will be using in snake case. And yeah, uh, then you also have like a, a really cool video to introduce uh, the tool. So yeah, I wanted to share with you guys the documentation as I'm not going to cover everything uh, related to this. Uh, I'm uh, going to cover some useful bricks that we use on our daily basis because I, I thought that would be more interesting. And also, uh, if we go to BrickHub, we will notice that we can search bricks from the community. There are already uh, a lot of bricks that were published. And if we type here anything, okay. I'm going to use uh, a brick that was published uh, from someone I don't know, but it is called JSON serializable template that I think is really useful, uh, especially if you're using JSON serializable in your projects. So yeah, let's start with the, the fun part. So okay, here I, I'm in VS Code. Let me just zoom in a little bit. And I have two different projects. On one hand, I have my bricks that I use on my daily basis. And these are the ones that we created. And they are not uh, published on BrickHub yet, but uh, yeah, we have like different bricks for creating new features or creating Flutter packages or UI packages. And then uh, in here I have a fresh new Flutter 3.0 project. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to try to explain how to integrate these bricks into the Flutter project, okay? So if we see the bricks, basically they have uh, the same structure. If we go to, for example, the Flutter package brick, we will be able to see uh, the brick folder we, where we can define like uh, using the, this uh, template notation, the most of template notation, we'll be able to put like uh, the build lambdas. So every, every uh, building lambdas will be replaced by the actual name we supply to the brick. So that's uh, the cool part because it's, it's basically a template. Uh, we can fill everything in here with the name we want. And, and yeah, we are going to use this Flutter package. As, as you know, you probably uh, in every Flutter project, uh, we like to use like different packages to modularize the solution. So if we go here to the Flutter project, uh, we create like, uh, sorry about that, and uh, we create a new folder uh, that is called packages, let's say. Okay, so if we navigate to the package folder, uh, let me go to yeah, the project itself. So I'm going to explain how to use this brick. Naturally, you will have to have this brick locally in your machine, uh, either by because you create it or because you pull it from BrickHub. But I'm going to assume we already covered that part, and I'm going to explain how to make your own package uh, in Flutter using this kind of template. So if we run the command, okay, let's enter first to the package uh, folder. And if we run the command mason make, and we use the name of our brick that was called Flutter package, we will be able to create uh, our first package. And this, uh, as you know, is asking us, uh, what is the name of the package? Uh, so basically we like, uh, in all of our projects, an authentication repository package to handle authentication. So I'm going to say I need an authentication repository. And then if I hit enter, this will create for me six files. And uh, this is like um, basically such as create a Flutter, uh, use the Flutter create command. But what you will notice is that now I have my package with my linter of choice that is Flutter links, but I, I also add different rules that I use on my daily basis and the team uses. Also, I have the structure I want for my package. Uh, we have our own testing files, our own imports and exports, and everything was replaced by the name I supplied. So that is awesome because I can create a package packages in my application more consistently because I don't want I don't have to preoccupied about uh, having my own linter or my own rules or even uh, deleting the, the uh, from the past spec everything that is not necessary. So like the comments. So yeah, uh, another example that is 
uh, what I told you that I, I found it in BrickHub uh, to show you that also you can use bricks from the community will be the JSON serializable template. So if we go here and enter to JSON serializable template, we can see that in the readme we can copy this uh, command to add it. And there is a, uh, yeah, an introduction on how to use it. And if we copy this, let's say we can, we have to uh, include a model in our new package. So let's create a model folder. And if we navigate to the model folder, so let's go to the authentication repository. Uh, let's go to the lib folder and inside the lib folder, the source, the model folder. All right, so let's create our first uh, new uh, model. So I will certainly require like a user model to authenticate uh, my user. My user. And in the old days, we will have to create this manually. But now that we have our template installed, we can use actually this uh, brick. If we hit enter, it will ask again, what is the name of the class you want to create? And I'm going to say, I want to create a user. So if you notice, this only generate for me one file. But, but if you notice, this file uh, already have all the JSON serializable notation, the from JSON and to JSON uh, methods. So that uh, it's really good because I don't have to care about what is the actual notation and how the from JSON and to JSON are, are calling the actual methods. This is something really repetitive across every model. So it's really cool to have a command to speed up every everything in the process. So yeah, this is not working because uh, the for this to work, it, it requires to have uh, already installed uh, some dependencies. So let's uh, go to the path spec and install it. So yeah, I'm going to use the uh, Flutter path to just in install uh, those dependencies. So we are going to need a build runner and also JSON annotation and also JSON serializable. All right. So let's, uh, okay, so I, I miss in the name of uh, build runner, which will double now. And okay, so let's run everything again. Um, yeah, now we have our, um, our dependencies that were required for this to, to run. Let's add again, okay, the build runner is here. Okay, and this is not working because we actually have to run uh, the, uh, build runner method, so let's run it. So it will be Flutter Pub run, build runner, and run. I think it was, I think it was build. All right, yeah, usually I, I copy and paste this uh, command. So yeah, now uh, this will work because it will generate my user model. So we are, uh, the next time I use the brick, uh, I will be able to not have these errors because I already have the, the libraries and stuff. All right, so for the last brick I wanted to present, uh, the name is, uh, let's wait till this uh, finish, but the name will be, let's go to the future route block. So this is probably the most, okay, uh, this works. So this is the brick that we use the most because naturally we have more features and packages in our project. So every time we create a new feature, uh, we have to create a lot of boilerplate code, such as, for example, uh, we are using block. So we have to create three different files, the block, the event, the state. Also, we have to create uh, our view and our route, also the Barrett file. Uh, if you notice, we have to have like this different import in here and we have to supply the path. So. Uh, to determine what is the path that the user is, uh, where the user is creating the actual feature, we can use the hooks. This is, uh, I made this just to demonstrate uh, what could be a possible uh, use case of running a hook before creating your own template. So if you have the pre-generation uh, hook, this will be run just before creating the template and you can have access to the hook context where you could find different variables that you supply to your brick. And you can play with that and maybe you can add new variables. And in this case, I'm trying to add 
uh, the future path to the template so we can know how to fill those imports uh, in, a, in, in the correct way. Also, I'm running uh, the, I, I'm trying to add the Flutter blog and Equitable because it is a requirement for this brick to actually works uh, because I'm, I'm relying on those libraries. So if the user want, I, I ask him uh, if it is the first time that he will use the, uh, the Mason, this brick. So uh, we will install it the, the dependencies for him. So yeah, I, I know this can be uh, uh, really easy to do it manually, but it's just to demonstrate what it will be some use case of uh, running a pre-generation script. So if we go again to our example, and uh, now we go to the lib folder uh, where we are going to create uh, our new feature. Okay, so here to use this rig, we can use Mason make feature route doc. And in here, you'll notice that it will ask me the feature name. In this case, we let's go to a project here. So we will see that it's, it's really empty. Uh, let's go to also to the passback YAML. We don't have like the libraries require. And it will ask me the name and I'm going to create a login uh, basic feature. So I'm using the default one. Also, uh, I'm using the default for the app because I already named it like uh, my project uh, name is app. And then it will ask me if I want to add Flutter blog and Equitable. So I'm going to say yes, because it's the first time I run this. And when I run, uh, you will notice that uh, currently we are adding the dependencies, uh, Flutter blog and Equitable. So this was already added. And then the Mason template was created. So I can go to my login folder and I can go to everything is working as expected. There isn't so much uh, any errors. Uh, the imports are right. Uh, all the blocks uh, file are right, and I'm just about to start my new feature, but I already have all this code in place, and I can worry about the more interesting part. And if we go again to the lib folder, uh, and let's say in our own structure, we have like a feature folder instead of uh, putting everything in the lib folder, uh, we can go to the feature folder, and again, create a, the same Mason brick, uh, using Mason make feature route block. And uh, let's say now we want um, a logout feature instead of the login, we will use app. And we don't have to install the, the libraries because we already did, so we will hit no. And then this will work also with the same imports because uh, if you notice here, we are filling thanks to the pre-generation uh, script, we are filling with the correct path. Okay, so yeah, no matter, uh, I mean, the, the only condition is that you have to put your feature in the lib folder, that's, we usually do that, that but um, it will be a better experience to create your first feature because you will have like all this code in place and you will start, um, yeah, with a more interesting part. Okay, so that, that was it about the demo, so now I, I I want to get back to the slides again. So let's go to uh, the slides so I can present like some final conclusions. Okay, thanks. So if I, uh, okay, so what will be the conclusion? So using Mason, uh, by using Mason, you will achieve uh, a lot of consistency and productivity and that will result on a better development experience. Those are two highly, uh, important things in your project, like imagining being in a project for more than a year. So having a, a level of consistency could help you to avoid, uh, I know, mistakes or to think what was uh, the thing I was thinking one year ago. And again, the productivity also could help you focus on the more interesting part of the things that you are doing as a programmer. Um, and yeah, uh, how this relates to the code generation topic, that is also a hot one. I mean, this is not strictly code generation as we know it. Like we also present the JSON serializable and in other talks they, they also present this, but it is a way to speed up our development process after all. Either you use it code generation or Mason or even GitHub Copilot or I don't know, some low code tool. Uh, the idea is to try to automate what can be automated, right? So I think I strongly suggest to test or uh, see if you can incorporate one of these things to your development experience because it will let you be more productive. 
And yeah, again, no worry about the most uh, tedious part of our work. And yeah, another point that uh, this uh, has to be collaborative because as you know it, uh, I present also a brick from the community and, and yeah, I, I really encourage you to try to create your own ones and share it uh, as I did. So yeah, um, that's uh, the end of the presentation. Uh, I, uh, I was really excited to be here and yeah, thank you all. Uh, those are my social networks uh, in case you want to contact me. Uh, yeah, I think we can now uh, have like the Q&A session. Thank you so much for wonderful presentation. The BRICS, the reusable template we can use again and again and speed up our development, right? Sure. And uh, uh, for, thank you for sharing the tool for uh, the BRICS Hub. That's really interesting. Yeah, yeah it's Thank really you. interesting, right? As I said, it's, it's like the pub there for the bricks, right? So you will be able to find like a lot of bricks out there, hopefully. Uh, yeah, uh, I really encourage to to try this. Yeah, I have one question. We make a new brick using the mason. Is there any command that we can list out all the installed brick in our application? Yeah, totally. I mean, the, the I as I explained, I, I didn't try to cover the whole experience of using the tool and the CLI, but it's really natural uh, how to use it. And you will see that you have basic command to create uh, the basic structure of a new brick. Uh, I think the command is Mason new and your the name of the brick. Also, you can list uh, all, all of your bricks using LS, such as we do on, on our terminal normally. And, and yeah, there are a lot of commands such as get uh, to retrieve all your bricks either from your GitHub or your brick hub. Uh, so yeah, it's really natural to interact with the CLI especially. Yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much. Yeah. Sure. All right. Um, okay, I don't know if uh, there's any other questions, but uh, if not, I really enjoy to be here and yeah, hopefully uh, you learn something and you can try this uh, at home. Sure. Thank you so much. Have a nice evening. Okay. Have a nice day. Bye. Bye.